Hello there, welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for another project today. Today I will be making a much requested house coat, a robe, a lounge, uh, some loungewear to wear around the house here. Of course now lockdown is easing up in some areas, but um, I'm an introvert so that doesn't make that much of a difference to me. I still will be spending a lot of time at home, especially because I work here from home. And now it is about to be summer again here in this hemisphere that I'm in. Um, so a house coat or some sort of an extra layer would seem superfluous really, except for that I work down here in a basement where it does stay quite chilly since I am underground. So it's nice to have a robe or something, an extra layer to throw on down here while I'm sitting here editing or writing, um, just because it does get a little bit chilly down here. Here are some images of some vintage house coats that were inspiring me for this sort of project today. I did of course want to add a hood because why not? That's right. Why not is the answer. So we will be going over how to draft a hood today. It's kind of deceptively both weird and uh, easy. So I will get into that later. And then of course this will wrap in the front like these house coats too. And I don't think I've shown any wrap styles other than the back wrap top here on the channel before. So we'll be getting into that a little bit here in the pattern drafting as well. But let's go ahead and jump on over to the blue patterning table of doom to get started as always. All right, here we are. And I have my all-in-one bodice block here front and back to be able to draft this pattern today because this is going to be an all-in-one sleeve. It's just going to be a long one, um, kind of called a dolman sleeve or a bat wing sleeve sometimes. Same general idea, but to begin, because this is going to be a wrap front on this, I'm going to trace a full front of this pattern. So I'm mirroring it along the center front here, and I've traced all the relevant details, like these darts here, which I will draw in. And I'm going to take this one here on the right, well, the left-hand side of the garment, but the right-hand side of the image here, and extend that up to the apex, because I'm going to draw the front wrappiness uh, of this, yeah, that's really technical, um, through the apex point. So where this will be cut off for the wrap, I'm drawing that through the apex so that I can close this dart here. And I was adjusting the lighting and it was a little bit too bright before and it's a little bit too dark now, but hopefully you can forgive me. All right, so I have my you know, front angle for the wrap drawn in. I'm just drawing up from the neckline down to the side, you know, uh, you can do whatever you wish, but uh, keeping it kind of a straight line from the neckline down to the apex and then swinging it out to the side seam. I'm not going to come all the way to the side seam. As you can see, it's about an inch out down there on the right hand side under my ruler there. It's about an inch out from the side seam, but I'm making sure I'm drawing this through the apex. Now I'm going to draw a collar onto this, but it's just going to be a fold back collar. So I'm just going to leave myself some paper and fold this over, uh, cut this out and fold this over to get an idea of what kind of collar I want. So let me just cut some of this excess paper away. Won't be needing any of this up here to the neckline, slice that away. And so now along this line here, the front wrap line of this garment, I'm going to decide what kind of collar I want. So I'm just going to fold that along that angle and draw in the shape of the collar I'm after. Of course, you could draw this to be a curved shape, a slim collar, a wide cover, collar, a, you know, longer pointed collar, whatever you want. Um, but I'm just drawing in a very like basic sort of collar shape, lapel shape, I suppose. And I will just cut again the excess away here. You can see I came up just a little bit down there by the waist, gave myself a little bit more room. And then I will cut some of this excess paper along the bottom edge here away as well so that I can eliminate this dart on the like short wrap side of this. All right, so we have our collar drawn in, got that. Now I need to eliminate this dart. So I'm going to, again, cut up to the apex and I'm going to swing that dart closed because we came up through that apex earlier, we can go ahead and just close this entire thing. And in fact, I'm not just going to close it. I'm going to overlap the top point of this by about a half inch. So up here at the um, apex, I'm overlapping the dart and I'm just smoothing that line. So up here, it's overlapped by about a half inch where it normally was. And that just helps the wrap sit nicely against the body instead of gape open. So that's just my recommendation up there. Now for the sleeve on this, I'm going to extend my shoulder line out. So this little mark up here on long, along the shoulder line is where my shoulder is on my regular pattern. So everything past that is already sleeve, uh, the all-in-one sleeve in this case. But I'm just going to extend this out. Any all-in-one sleeve, I think you can do this too. But I'm going to extend this out the length of my arm, which happens to be 22 inches. So from that shoulder mark, I'm going to go out 22 inches here, like so. And I'm going to need a little bit more paper here. So I'm just taping some on. Slide this over so you can see what I'm doing. Now, I don't want these sleeves to be the length of my arm, though I want a big nice cuff on the end that I can fold back. So I'm going to add on another six inches here to the length of this. And I'm going to come down six inches as well. So I have a nice 
a wide opening for my hand down here. Of course, I need my hand to fit into this sleeve here. I don't want it too narrow, otherwise it's going to be too tight, especially since I'm going to be fully lining this garment today. And I'm going to keep that six inch cuff all the way along back down to, you know, a couple inches past where my arm length is. I'm going to drop down the underarm here by about two inches from the original underarm on the all-in-one. I'm just going to curve this whole thing down into the side seam. So I'm just drawing this curve in from my sleeve cuff down, dropped from my arm hole area to create the new side seam slash underarm seam. It's all in one now. Now I may end up putting a raglan seam in here just because this pattern piece is so large that it would be hard to fit on my fabric. So we'll see if I end up adding seams and separating the sleeve from the main body of the garment. But for now I can keep it all in one and go ahead and cut this out. And spoiler alert, I will end up separating the sleeves from the main body of this just because I want to go lay it out on my fabric. And I was going to have to cut this piece on the cross grain instead of the straight grain. And I was like, do you know what? If I just separate these sleeves off, I won't have to worry about it. So we'll get to that later. Row 2021, front cut two, like so. So I know that was quick, uh, but you know, it's a quick one today. It's a quick project actually this, but we have a couple of fast throw them at you pattern modifications up here in the start of the video today. All right, so here I have my bodice back to draft the back of this. Now, of course, I don't need that seam allowance along the center back there, so I'm tracing this without that because I will cut this on a fold because I don't need a back closure in this because it wraps in the front. And I'm just going to line up the front pattern here along the shoulder seam of the back as well and trace in that same sleeve along the top and the down here by the cuff. I'm just going to trace all that in and I'm going to then realign this front piece at the waist seam. So again, I'm lining this up down here at the waist and drawing in that new curve that I had done for the um, side seam, I mean to say, not waist seam. You know what I mean. You can see what I'm doing. Now the curve here is actually would come out to be longer on the back than on the front. And so I'll show you how I accommodate for that. Um, it's never a problem in the short sleeve version of this, but when I do the long sleeve, I do end up having to make this modification. I'm not sure if this is the official way to do it, but this is the way I've done it and it's always worked for me. So I'm going to go ahead and leave myself a little bit of extra paper here. And I've put some slashes in my sleeve, as you can see, like from the underarm curve up into the shoulder. And I'll show you how I'm going to fix that line so that my pieces, my front and backs match up perfectly. I'll just cut off my excess here. You can see I raised the back neckline because I always have to on my blocks. Don't know if I remember to mention that. My blocks, for some reason, when I trace them onto the card, they have such a low neckline, so I'm always raising the back neckline on my things. Anyway, I'm going to slash up these lines I drew across the sleeve here up to the shoulder seam. And then I'm going to lay the front pattern piece underneath line everything up again so the front or the top of this uh shoulder seam matches up fine but if i go ahead and start to go down here then i have to overlap this pattern piece with itself to get the correct curve so that's basically why i've just put that little slash in there you can see it kind of just needs this dart here where the pattern starts to overlap and so i just need that little bit of fullness removed from my back sleeve which does mean my back sleeve like curves downward a little bit more than my front sleeve but I'm not worried about it, you know, not even a little. Uh, I think this is the same way I did it on the gold evening gown I made for the Millionaire Milliner lookbook last year. Um, that has the same sleeve. Also the black rayon gown, evening gown in that video has the same sleeve. I'll put a card up to that video here so you can see what this looks like when it not being made into a robe to wear around the house. Um, but this same sleeve modification that I'm doing here is what I did for the gold gown and for the black version in that video as well. So you can see now both the under seam and the shoulder seam all line up. So my bodice pattern for this uh, dressing gown slash robe slash whatever we want to call it is finished. Set that aside for now. Now for the skirt of this robe, I am just going to use my A-line skirt pattern, but I'm going to use a full length version of it. So here are my A-line skirt front and back. You can see this is the short version that we've made here on the channel before. I'll also put a card up to that video here if you want to see how to make this A-line skirt pattern. But all I've done is extend the side seam and extend the front and just make them longer. So. These are just full length versions, 45 inches long, which is actually my height with heels on, actually. So I should have shortened this for a dressing gown, but I just have a very dramatic dressing gown that's very long and I'm sure I'll trip over it all the time, um, which is fine. And here I'm just taping some scrap paper together to use to draft our hood here. This is going to be a little bit slapdash. Um, basically, it's just a rectangle, but this is like a fancy rectangle that I'm going to be using this book here, Pattern Drafting for Fashion Design by Helen Joseph Armstrong. I'm going to be using the instructions in this book. 
Um, I have found <clears throat> remarkably similar instructions posted on Pinterest, so you, I will link to those in the description below. Um, so I just need two measurements for this, the over the head measurement here, which is kind of from your uh, between your collarbones up over your head and then back down. And I'm going to need that measurement, but I only need one third of that, which for me is going to be nine and three quarters. So I'm just write that down. And then around the back of the head too, from like above your ear, around the back of your head, um, you need that measurement as well. And then I'm just going to be following the instructions in this book, plotting the points here to draw a very particular rectangle for this. But basically the rectangle is um, from A to B here, which is what I'm drawing right this second, is going to be nine and three quarters. So nine and three quarters here. And then above that from B to C, you just add on 2.5. And that's kind of just ease for the hood not being skin tight. And then uh, to make the width of the hood here, it is just again that nine and three quarters measurement again. So that's the same measurement across here. So nine and three quarters as well. And so we have a bit of a rectangle going on here, just things are squared off. And then you take your back pattern for whatever you're like, whatever neckline you're sewing this onto. So here I have my bodice pattern again. I'm going to line up the center back of this pattern with the center back of the hood in a minute. Uh, there we go. So I'm lining up the center back with the center back of the hood. I'm going to trace the neckline onto the hood pattern as well, like so. This is a little bit tricky and strange, but this is how you like make a hood that's fitted to your exact pattern by using your pattern like this. Then you move the pattern out three quarters of an inch, like so, because you're gonna have a dart in this hood, yes. There are darts even in the hood. I know, how strange. Trace in the shoulder line as a indicator for, we'll need that in a minute. And then this little point here is going to be point F, at least in these instructions it is. <clears throat> and between those E and F are where our little tiny dart will end up being. So you'll see that in a moment. But now I need my front pattern and I will line up the front along the shoulder seam like so. And again, I need to draw in my little front neckline here up to where my collar is. So like so. And then it has you swing the pattern two inches away. Um, why do I do this? Because the instructions say so. That's right. So I have no reason. Two inches away from here, you're going to redraw the neckline in. And I've switched to green marker just so you can see a little bit of a difference. So two inches away from down here, swinging from point F, you redraw the neckline in and this is the one you're going to actually use. So point H here. And then we curve the front of the hood here down to point H like so. Just to draw on a curve like so. And then we just need to draw on our little dart here, which just is three inches up from E and F parallel with the center back of the hood. So like so, three inches, like so. And you can curve off the back of your hood here, but if you do, then this can't be cut on the fold any longer. So I'm going to add seam allowance down along the back of my hood here and just ease that up into the top. And this is a very basic hood pattern. Um, I took this draft here and I cut it out of muslin and played around with it to see if I wanted to make any modifications. And this is my hood pattern after doing so. So I curved the back a little bit further and I ended up widening this a tiny bit, I think. So I have my customized hood pattern here, but all I did here was just cut that original draft out of muslin and play around with this on my head and see if I wanted it to be deeper or more curved, less curved, what I wanted and just played around with it until I had a shape I liked. And then I made it deep enough that I could fold it back a little bit like this in the front so that the lining would show because I thought that would be fun. So now I have my patterns here and I did end up deciding to go ahead and separate the sleeve and the body of the pattern like I mentioned. And to do so, I'm just going to draw, oh, my camera just moved, <laughs> interesting. I'm going to draw in a like kind of raglan-ish line here. Um, if you've ever seen a baseball t-shirt where the sleeves are a different color than the body of the t-shirt, that's a raglan sleeve usually. So I'm just going to draw in from the shoulder tip down somewhere underneath the, like into the armpit really. I'm just gonna make sure that's the same on the back as well here. I'm just drawing these angled lines, I will separate the pattern along that line. And then because I've added a style line, um, anytime you separate the pattern like this, you are going to have to add seam allowance back in. So that is what I will do next. Let's tape this down because of course, anytime you cut the main body of the pattern of the bodice apart, you have to be able to sew it back together with something. And as such, we will need seam allowance naturally. So just adding on half inch there for the front. And then I'm just transferring my grain line on to the sleeve pattern too, as well. So I don't get confused. But again, I will do the same for the back. And these will line up perfectly at the underarm seam and the shoulder seam just because of how I made it to do so, I suppose. And so you could use a contrast. So you could use a different color on the sleeves if you wanted to. But these style lines I'm putting in here not for style, but just so that it, I can have a closer cutting layout on this fabric. Because for this robe, especially because it's full length, I needed to use five 
yards plus a fabric and so I was trying to even that was like close so I was trying to get my cutting layout as uh, you know with as little ease as I could but I went ahead and cut all of this out of both black poplin and some green flannel some cozy green flannel both 100% cotton I did go ahead and pre-wash those fabrics so I threw them in the washer and dryer so that they're kind of like pre-shrunk because sometimes cotton fabrics will shrink when you wash them so it's important to pre-wash them how you intend to wash the garment in the end so I can now throw this robe into the washing machine in the dryer anytime I want to because it has been pre-shrunk and nothing it won't shrink anymore than it already has look at my messy hair I'm just transferring my darts onto this is uh, the center back of the lining here and I'm actually just using marker on this flannel you know uh, it's a dressing gown for around the house so inside it will have literally marker this isn't disappearing ink it's just my regular markers it's being extra naughty this day wow but uh, it's like thick cotton flannel and washable marker no one will ever know the first time this gets washed the marks inside of it will disappear whatever we're used to using me using colored pencil that doesn't really disappear but this is a new level for me a stooping to a new level today whatever no one will know but you and I especially because this is a garment for lounging around the house and I don't invite people over to my house I don't even know any people anyhow but now I can go ahead and mark my darts on the black outside fabric as well same idea again this is just a lightweight cotton poplin for this uh, it's kind of like a cotton it's not that different from like a cotton broadcloth this one didn't feel that different but a uh, poplin is usually uh, a good way to describe that to you would be usually button-down shirts like if you went to Banana Republic and bought a dress shirt well a woman's dress shirt at least usually that's kind of a cotton poplin I mean they call it cotton shirting but poplin is of a similar weight um, I would have used cotton sateen for this which would have been very grand and like thicker and um, a little bit more luxurious but I was feeling cheap the day I ordered the supplies for this and so the poplin was like three or four dollars cheaper a yard and since I did need five or six yards for this I decided to go for the poplin this time <laughs> thanks but here I am just again marking all my darts on the fronts and the backs again the skirts pieces for this because they're a-lined we the a-line skirt pattern eliminates darts so there's no darts on the skirt but there are still some on the fronts here we have big darts on the fronts and then the backs have darts as well so I just marked and pinned all of that and then I have my hood pattern here I'm just going to realign these pieces so that they are right sides together and then I will sew the back of the head slash over the head seam of both the lining and the fashion fabric for this it seems weird to call like plain slightly cheap <laughs> black cotton poplin the fashion fabric but it is in this case the outside fabric of our garment whereas this cozy flannel is the inside and we do have our little dart here on the hood so I'm just marking that as well there on both the lining and the outside it is quite fun to have a hooded garment of course it would be fun to make like a hooded 1940s very dangerous dame dress as well so we'll have to make like a hooded cocktail dress sometime because that was definitely a thing in the 1940s sometimes the hoods were separate as well and then I have all my sleeve pieces that I just need to set aside for now that I will need to sew on to the respective fronts and backs once the darts are all sewn and I don't need to finish any of the raw edges of this like normally you'll see me run things the serger or even if I'm feeling couture about life use rayon seam binding on something but of course this is gonna be fully bag lined this whole thing will be fully lined and therefore no raw edges will receive any friction and therefore I'm not gonna worry about them so that is another thing that makes this a quicker project is that I don't have to finish my raw edges now I did not have enough fabric to cut both of my fronts uh, because of course again it's a wrap you need two fronts my left and right front I was gonna cut them on the fold but I did not have enough fabric to do so so I do have to actually sew seams in my fronts here for the lining so that is what I am pinning together here nice long skirt seams for this project set that aside as well we all know how I like to work in batches tis my nature and here's another the other a-line skirt front here adjusting the camera over at the machine here and I did need to wind a new bobbin so just re-thread the machine and then I end up adding a little bit of oil into this machine as well because I try and remember to oil it every time especially because I live in a rather dry place Colorado is a very dry state the air here is super dry so um, I do not want my machine to seize up that's for sure so I'll give this one a little bit of oil on the bobbin case in there just keep this next to the machine all right, now we're ready to go and again just starting to sew all of my darts here again starting at the wide end of the dart sewing along my marking and then off the tip here and then I will tie my dart shut 
like always. I am using a smaller stitch length here. I'm using, I think, 12 stitches per inch. It's nice to use smaller stitch length, especially on your darts. It just helps them lay smoothly once pressed open or pressed to the side, I suppose. So, so all of my darts in both my lining and my fashion fabric now. You've seen me sew many a dart here on the channel. And of course, like I mentioned recently, I will be making an entire video all about darts soon because I feel like for some reason they, uh, they are a point of confusion for people. Whereas for me, this is not the case. So I'll try and explain all I know about darts soon here. And I'm going to sew my hood seams here again, like so, just half inch seam allowance as usual on all this nonsense. But I will sew the fashion fabric and the lining for the hood as well. I will go ahead and bag line the hood separately from the rest of the garment. And so when the rest of the garment gets bag lined, the hood is kind of like hanging free basted inside, but we'll, we'll see that later when we get to that step. Let's go ahead and sew all the way around here, like so. And then I'm just going to pinch and pin my darts real quickly while I'm sitting here because they're just these little tiny silly hood darts. And I'll just go ahead and stitch those quickly as well. Then over here on the ironing board, I'll start pressing everything. Of course, I always press my darts on the bodice towards the center back or center front, depending on if I'm working on the front or the back. So here on the back, I'm just pressing those towards the center back. Then I have one of my front pieces here and I'll press that dart towards the center front. Someone asked me about dart flaps <laughs> from the Q&A, like what to do with them. And I mean, you can trim them if you want to, you can cut them open and press them flat if you want to, which is what I did for the Victorian costuming project, if you've watched that here on the channel, uh, because that seemed to be what was done at the time. But uh, you know, you, you can just press them towards, either press them down towards the waist or towards the center of the piece you're working on. And then I just wanted to clip the curve on the back of my hood here. So just doing that so I can press that open nice and flat. And then I will do the same for the flannel as well. Just pressing those darts towards the center back of the hood even as well. And I'm just using my tailor's ham to be able to press this curved seam. But I'll go ahead and press my hood seam open here as well. And like I said, we're going to kind of bag line this hood separately. So we'll do that in just a moment. Okay. So I have my hood lining that I will do the same order of operations to here. And then I will put these right sides together and pin them all along the front opening of the hood so that, um, we can go ahead and line the hood. This uh, garment actually turns out looking rather <laughs> like medieval or like some sort of a monk cost, like a Slytherin monk, uh, is what this garment kind of looks, ends up looking like. So for those of you history bounders out there who are watching, I know you're around. I know I don't do a lot of historic styles, but this could very easily work for like a sort of medieval look or like an elf, elven or like any other cloak-ish sort of look. Um, for a robe for around the house, it looks rather monastic in the end. So you may notice that here as we move on. But here I am just again, pinning the right sides together, the hood inside itself to its lining, and I will go ahead and stitch around there. Back to ironing my darts open again, like so. And then I can go ahead and start pinning on all of my sleeves that, of course, I separated again. Not so that I can have this style line, but just so <laughs> that I could have a nicer cutting layout when I was laying this out on my fabric. So I have lots of straight seams to sew for sewing the sleeves back on to the main body pieces. And I'll set those next to the machine. Spoiler alert, by the way, this robe does come together and I'm actually wearing it right now as I speak to you from the future. That's right, from the past, Showing you footage from the past and actually speaking to you from the past as well. But the future of me here in the video, at least. I'm wearing a different Star Wars shirt now. <laughs> I think we see two different Star Wars shirts even in this video. There's a lot of Star Wars shirts as loungewear in my life, all right? And then we have my long skirt seams that I keep sewing as well. Um, and uh, press those open and then I can line up my side seams. So, of course, again, I have one back and two fronts for each, the lining and the outside of the skirt here. So I'm lining up the fashion fabric for the skirt all along the very long side seam here. But back over on the machine to sew everything. I'm sewing my hood together here now. Again, trying to remember to move my pins as I go here and be good. I'm not using my silk pens today, so can't just sew over them like I normally do. And I am just using all-purpose Guterman polyester thread for this. I did have a question about why I use polyester thread instead of cotton thread. Um, two reasons. One, I do find that cotton thread sometimes will snap on me and it makes me nervous. Um, I plan to use my garments, everything I'm making now at this point in my sewing career, 15 years into sewing, everything I'm making now, I'm pretty sure about wanting to keep my wardrobe for a very long time. 
And so I want everything to last, you know, any clothes I make, I actually, I want them to last. And so, um, usually oftentimes like on vintage garments, the first thing to go actually is the thread will deteriorate. So using polyester thread just feels a little bit safer and stronger to me. So that's part of the reason I use it. And the other reason is because there's not as much color variety available in cotton thread as there is in poly thread for whatever reason, they don't make every color of cotton thread. So it's nice if you want to have things match quite well, uh, you kind of have to use polyester. <clears throat> But here I am sewing all my sleeves back onto the body of the garment as well here. You'll see me press these and trim these in a moment. Back over on the ironing board. Here we are. Get everything in focus. But here are those kind of raglan seams that I can go ahead and press open. And it ends up with these little triangles that you just snip off. Boop. You can leave them in there, honestly. But for perfectly clean finished nonsense, just go ahead and trim those off. So we'll just press those for the backs and the fronts and the outside and the lining. It's a lot of very repetitive steps for this particular project. Anytime you completely line something like this, you do everything twice, you know? You do it for the lining and for the uh, outside. And then I can go ahead and start lining up these pieces. This is the back here and I'm gonna line up a front on top of that and start pinning along the long, long shoulder seam slash sleeve seam here, matching up where that raglan is then up to the neckline, just pin all the way along the top of the shoulder slash top, top seam of the sleeve. And then I will pin the underarm slash side seam here as well. Again, just matching up where I had that intersect here, like so, or not intersect, but line up all the way down the side seam and then all the way up the underarm seam as well. So I can sew those for both the lining and the fashion fabric. All right, back over here on the machine, I can go ahead and sew my underarm seams and my shoulder seams and probably a few more skirt seams as I was doing those as I went along as well. I'm having like, uh, of course, now that I turn on, as soon as I turn on the microphone, <laughs> I'm having like strange sinuses nonsense going on. I don't even have any flowers in here right now. What is with the uh, sudden allergy attack that I'm having? <laughs> it's like the world, my body knows that I turned the microphone on and it's like, oh, sneeze time. No, no, that's not useful. So sorry if I sound nasally, but for some reason I'm having spring all at once or something. I don't know what's happening. All right, now that I have sewn both my underarm seam and my shoulder seam, um, if you sewed just the shoulder seams first and then pressed those, it would be easier to press them. <laughs> but I pre since I sewed the underarm seam and the overarm seam, as it were, at the same time, I am just using a little pressing arm. It's just like a pillow shaped like an arm inside my sleeve to be able to press those nicely open and flat. And this underarm seam uh, slash side seam technically is curved. It's just such a shallow curve that I'm not going to be clipping it. Um, I always say to clip your curves and I do mean it, but something as shallow and large as this, you can get away with not doing it, especially in like a dressing gown for wearing around the house. Like if I was making someone's wedding dress, which I would never do, I would do this in a more couture kind of way, but it's fine, <laughs> it'll be fine. Clipping curves always is another one of those things where it's like, do as I say, not as I do, you know? I don't always follow the rules either, but I try and let you know <laughs> my opinion on best practice as we go through, even if I don't always follow myself. And here I am just pressing open more long skirt seams also, because many a skirt seam to do for this as well. All right, here I am on the floor because this is a very large thing. I want this all laid out. So this is the full skirt for the lining. So I have my back A-line skirt and then one A-line skirt front over here one A-line skirt front over here. So it's got two full fronts, right? But the bodice pattern here, doo -doo -doo -doo, that we did, this guy. If you remember, I didn't bring this, I like uh, the actual side seam came out to right here, so I didn't come all the way out to the side seam. So technically my full fronts need to be a little bit shorter. So I did go ahead and just whoop, slice off from the top of the skirt, tapered down um, just to keep the rest of the flare down there but just to make sure that this matched up up here at the waist, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. Um, so I just trimmed it here. I, d I had both layers sitting on top of one another. In order to do that trimming, I'll do the same for the black cotton version of the skirt as well. I just trimmed a little bit off the top of the full fronts of the A-line skirt here, um, which again, although being an A-line, it is a lot of fabric at this point, um, because my next step here is to sew the skirts and the bodices together for both the green lining and the black cotton outer layer. So. That's what I'm doing here. I'm pinning side seams of the bodice, side seam slash underarm seam 
of the bodice to the skirt here, matching those up like so. And then I will pin along the front of the bodice, along the back, and then along the other front because of course this is a wrap, so it is basically just has two fronts. And hopefully you are following along. So I'm gonna do that same thing here. Um, I've just trimmed the skirt. I'm gonna pin the waist and the waistline of the bodice and waistline of the skirt together here and sew that together for the green and for the black. And here I am stitching that on the machine. Remarkably, I was able to get that video off of my phone. Sometimes my iPhone and my PC computer just do not want to communicate with one another. So getting footage off my phone is always a fun challenge. But here I am sewing that waist seam down, trying to be good and remove my pins as I go. Every once in a while I'll sew over one and then I'll feel bad. Sorry, little 99K. I try not to sew over thick pins with this. We are always seeing me stitch over uh, like fine silk pins, but I try not to sew over these ones. Like so, and then I can do the same for the black here too. Of course, now that we're working with the skirt pieces uh, completely sewn together, it's a large garment to be working on, which is a little bit annoying. But let's go ahead and press open those waist seams and then set that aside. Do the same for the black here. And again, just press open that seam. Uh, sewing is a lot of ironing, you know? Sewing is a lot of pressing. It's very important um, to having a nice finished result. Anyway, here's our little neckline on this garment. And you can see these where it will fold over to be a collar. But we need to sew our hood onto here. Now, of course, I've neglected to, here I am, <laughs> trimming my curve on my hood so that I can go ahead and press this hood, turn this right side out and press the hood. So I'll do that. And then we're going to baste the hood onto the neckline of the outside of the garment here. Okay, <laughs> here's the black outside shell of this robe and the hood is basted on along the neckline. Now I'm going to go ahead and bag line this whole thing with the flannel lining here. You know the box from Mood there. Um, so I'm going to lay this out on top of this and I'm going to pin all along the hem, all up one side, all along the neckline, and then uh, almost all the way down this straight edge as well. I'm going to leave part of the straight edge open so I can turn this all right side out here, but I'm about to pin right sides together. I'll show you what that looks like afterwards. All right, here we go. The right sides are facing one another down here. I've pinned all around the neckline. The hood is just hanging loose inside of this, but it's all pinned around the neckline, down the front, all down the sides, all around the back of the hem, up to about here, up to blank space in there, and then all the way back up this side as well. So it's all, so it's all pinned together, again with the hood sandwiched in between here, that's why I went ahead and basted it. Oh, my hands look red. Um, but it's just all pinned around the edge here. And I'm gonna have to sew that, which is going to be a task. It's like sewing a duvet cover or something, it's gigantic and hard to maneuver and annoying to move and over around. The sleeves are both just hanging loose, by the way, also. For now, we'll hem those separately in a second. But I'm gonna go ahead and sew all of this. Um, but I'm gonna go eat lunch first, you know. All right, let's go ahead and sew that very long <laughs> bag lining situation. So, sewing the lining to the fashion fabric all, away, all the way around, just with half inch seam allowance as usual. Once I get to a corner, I will leave the needle down, pull the presser foot up, turn the project, like so, boop, like that, around the corner, put the presser foot back down, keep sewing. That's just how I'm getting around all my corners here. But just fully attaching this thing to itself now, like so, all the way around. And this took, you know, an annoying amount of time in reality, just because it's heavy to move this garment around <laughs> while you're doing that. So like holding it with my other arm, with my left arm, and maneuvering everything around is a little bit irritating. And you see me starting and stopping here a lot up near the top, making sure the hood isn't getting tucked under in a weird way, making sure everything is going underneath the needle the way it needs to be. So feel free to stop and start and fix things and make sure you are doing what you want to. Better to do it right, you know, the first time than to go quickly. And then once you go to turn everything right side out, realize mistakes have happened, you know? Make sure you have a very full bobbin before you attempt something like this, by the way. <laughs> Otherwise, this is one of those seams that's so long that you are bound to run out of bobbin thread on this one. You can see my machine is actually scooching itself forward on my table here because it's rattling because I'm sewing quickly. Oh well.
and finally finished. I'm going to go ahead and clip my corners of all of this at the corner of my like lapel, my fold back lapel in the front and the bottom hems and the wrap and all that stuff. Then up here around the back neckline, I just need to clip the back neckline because that's quite curvy. So we'll put some clips in there and clip all my corners so that I can turn this right side out and press everything nicely along the edges. All right, turned right side out. I'm just going to go ahead and gather up my sleeves a little bit and stick the uh, sleeve lining into the sleeve like so, Ooh, like that. And then I will just uh, slip stitch the sleeve hems together to finish this, but I'll get to that in a minute. As you can see, I can just this sleeve is extra long so I can fold it back into the cuff. Hopefully you gathered that earlier, <laughs> but same idea. But I'm just po pulling out all my corners, zhuzhing this all around, and then I will press everything along that very long seam we just sewed so that everything lies nice and flat and smooth. And then of course I need to slip stitch shut the opening I had left to be able to turn this right side out. So I have that pinned here and I will just use like kind of a large stitch length and slip stitch that area shut. It's never going to receive any tension really. So I wasn't too worried about using big stitches here. So just quickly slip stitching this area shut and I will use this same sort of stitch into the fold, stitch into the other fold, stitch into the fold, stitch into the other fold kind of thing to finish the sleeve hems in a moment as well. But it's just like how you would close up a pillow or anything else. Just quickly slip stitching the shut. You could use a nice small fine couture like stitch if you wanted to, but here you can see I'm using giant basically basting light stitches. It's not going to matter, I promise. And then again I'm just going to turn my sleeve hems in on themselves the same way, that half inch seam allowance as usual. Just press that a little bit for the lining and then turn the outside fabric to meet it and just pin all the way around the sleeve cuff here or what will become a sleeve cuff. The sleeves don't really have cuffs, they're just extra long and I can roll them back basically. That's the idea behind these. All the way around here and then I will just again use that same slip stitch to sew those as well. And then of course all I needed, all that was left at this point was to sew a belt for this. So I just grabbed some long strips of leftover fabric from this. Um, these are just cut on the straight grain. It's about uh, five inches wide and then about a yard long. And then I just sewed two of those pieces together here um, for both the lining and the outside fabric. Of course, you know, you can make your belt as long as you want. You can make it as wide or thin as you want. Um, you can have like a short little tie belt, you can have a very long belt, you could have a wide kind of like obi belt. You do you. Um, actually, if you made this in kind of like, speaking of Obi-Wan Kenobi, for example, um, more like Jedi-ish earth tones, you could have a very Jedi looking, <laughs> Jedi robe looking uh, dressing gown with this as well. Of course, again, mine is black and green like this and it comes out very looking again, like I said, like a Slytherin monk, but that's right. Something that Maleficent would wear when she has a cold, you know? Does Maleficent, is she, you know, can you get a viral uh, anything when you are like a super villain? I don't know. And then I just have these smaller strips here. They're about 20 inches long and an inch and a half wide to make ties for the inside, to tie the inside of this robe shut. So I'm just folding those in half and I'll just turn these little tubes to create ties for the inside of this robe. I'm just stitching those with a very fine seam allowance over here. I'm just using the edge of the presser foot as my guide to stitch these along. And the camera is shaking, so let's cut back over to the ironing board. And I'll just turn these tubes with a knitting needle here real quickly and give them a quick press. You could, of course, use ribbon for ties if you wanted to, too. Or if you wanted this to, again, look very monastic, you could use, like, a braided rope cord with tassels. Or you could end up looking rather gone with the wind that way as well. Although people are always telling me something will look like Gone with the Wind, and I have no idea what people are talking about because I've actually never seen Gone with the Wind. Sorry, I know. Talk about vintage movie sacrilege. I've never seen it. I don't particularly want to. Is it long? I think it's probably long, isn't it? I like 40s movies that are like snappy and dialogue-y and like, like I'd rather just watch His Girl Friday again. I'm sorry. <laughs> but here I'm just going to go ahead and press my belt here, like so. I am not a black belt in any other regard. <laughs> I wish. I have no self-defense skills, other than sass, maybe. If I can, you know, be, have witty comebacks again, 
and slay people that way. That's all I've got. I wish I could do martial arts, but I'm not fit enough to even get fit. You know what I mean? I, have, I would have to start at the bottom. I'm just turning that other end half inch, half inch to slip stitch that shut as well. And then here are my little ties. I'm just going to go ahead and quickly hand stitch those on. You can wrap left over right or right over left, whichever you want. But I'm just sewing one tie to one of the fronts opening here. And then I will sew the other tie that that will tie to, to the inside side seam of the waist. You can see it's pinned there over here. So I'm just sewing this to the side seam on the inside though of the opposite side. Hopefully you understand how wrap garments work. You know what I mean? You'll see what I'm trying this on later in a moment, what I mean by this. But I'm just stitching this on by hand quickly, like so. You could stitch this by machine too if you wanted to. And then I have the wide belt, outside belt as well. And I'm actually gonna end up stitching this on just uh, at the front. I think I will stitch it on to the side seam later on. Oh, here I am trying to remove a little bit of the lint that all this has gathered while floating around the sewing room. But I'm stitching the center of this. I was thinking about stitching that to the side seam, but I ended up just stitching the belt onto this front here. And I just did that by hand with a back stitch, actually. Um, just stitching this on, kind of tacking it into place. In general. How often will I be tying this nicely? Not often. I'm just going to be throwing this robe on and getting wrapping up cozy in it. Although this could look like a nice fitted robe. Most of the time I'm just going to be like a little editing gremlin either editing books or editing videos, so, you know, I'm not going to be using the tie very, very often, weirdly enough. You could even get away with not having a belt on this. You could close it with a button or anything else. But here I am, and again, rather my Slytherin monk costume. And here is my finished dressing gown, house coat, uh, you know, robe, as it were. I think a, a dressing gown kind of implies something a little bit more lingerie-ish and like a nicer fabric, whereas this is more on the robe slash house coat cozy side of things with this fuzzy flannel lining and the more kind of uh, drab, I suppose, matte cotton like this on the outside. But it is very cozy, very like, um, looks like I should be like the headmistress of Slytherin or something, which of course I do not mind. It is kind of my kind of my, um, you know, vibe. But I hope you enjoyed seeing how this project came together today. I know I'm going to be wearing this robe sitting just off camera quite a lot down here. I've already been wearing it over the past week and a half since I've had it finished while I've been working on editing and things like that. And I'm about to take a little bit of a break and do some more writing down here in the basement where it is chilly. So I'm sure I'll be cozying up in this robe. Thank you as always for watching this video today, and I will see you again for more vintage fashion and sewing real soon. Bye.